This video is going to discuss Rule 23, in particular, written interrogatories. Again, there are two modes of taking your deposition, that is deposition on oral examination, and the other one is deposition upon written interrogatories. Ang pag-uusapan natin sa video na ito is yung written interrogatories. We will look at the procedure. But before we start, mas maganda sana kung napanood na ninyo ang video about the deposition officer as well as the process of deposition taking Kasi some of the topics here are hindi na natin uulitin. Diretso-diretso na yung pag discuss So, we'll go now to the process or to the procedure. We start by filing an ex parte motion to take the deposition of a person. Basis that is very clear according to Section 1 of your Rule 23. So, this is the amendment. You can now file an ex parte motion to take the deposition of that person. And who is that person that is a witness or that is your deponent? Kailangan ba that person is a party to the action or to the case? Answer is no because that person can either be a party to a case or he is not a party to a case. But can you file all the time an ex parte motion if you are going to take a deposition of a person? Answer is no because if the person is confined in prison, then you need to file a motion with leave of court. This is very clear according to the second sentence of section 1. The deposition of a person confined in prison may be taken only by leave on court and such terms as the court prescribes. So we have here a sample of that motion. These people are not my clients. Nakita ko lang to sa internet. Again, what you need to file is a motion, but you do not need leave of court because you can now file an ex parte motion. So what you are going to, to file is a motion to take the deposition of a person. In this example, deposition of the petitioners ang ginamit ni lawyer kasi the petitioners here are permanent resident of the United States and they will be um, returning na to the U.S. and they could no longer appear on the scheduled hearings for the reception of their testimony. After the filing of that ex parte motion, what is the next step? You need to serve the other party with a notice and together with that notice is your written interrogatories that is called your direct written interrogatories or your set of questions. What is our basis? Very clear according to section 25 of your rule 23. If there is a party desiring to take the deposition of any person and the mode of the deposition taking is written interrogatories, then he has has that obligation to serve the other party with a notice. So here is a sample of your deposition again taken from the internet since ang nagre-request dito ng deposition is the plaintiff then your notice is addressed to the defendant to the other party and the notice indicated the time kung kailan magkakaroon ng deposition and then also the notice as what is the uh, what is required under section 25 it stated also the name and address of the witness or the deponent in our example si Mr. Pulfred and also it indicated the name and the address of the deposition officer so since it is the, the deposition will be conducted within the Philippines then a notary public is allowed. So, ang deposition officer here is a notary public. So, after the service of notice, what will happen next? Then, the other party can file his cross-written interrogatories pag gusto niya. And he must do that within 10 calendar days. And then, yung pinadalhan, kung gusto niya, magpapadala din siya ng kanyang redirect written interrogatories within 5 calendar days. And then, the other party can again file his recross written interrogatories within 3 calendar days. What is our basis? Nasa section 25 of your rule 23. So, tanong, 
Diba, attorney, ang written interrogatories are only set of questions. Paano ka ngayon magpiprepare ng yung cross-written interrogatories? Eh, hindi mo naman alam kung ano ang mga isasagot dahil these are just set of questions. These are just series of questions. So, ang basis mo dyan sa pag-prepare ng written interrogatories, whether that is cross or recross, is i-anticipate mo yung mga possible na mga sagot. So, if there is a question, tapos sa tingin mo, ah, baka ito ang isasagot or hindi ito ang isasagot, then that is how you formulate your cross-written interrogatories. So, what will happen if you have objections to the series of questions? What are you going to do to uh, what are you going to do with your objections? Section 29 of Rule 23 is very clear that you have to serve in writing upon the party propounding so upon the other party and you have to uh, make it within the time allowed for serving succeeding cross or other interrogatory. So, kung meron kang objections dito sa direct written interrogatories, you have to do it also within 10 calendar days from uh, for the within the 10 calendar days for the filing of your cross written interrogatories. And the last chance that you can file your objection is within 3 calendar days after the service of the last interrogatories authorized. Kung hindi ka makakapag-file ng iyong objections, objections as to what, as to the form of written interrogatories, then what will happen? They are deemed waived. Later on, you will um, you will understand this, itong mga objections, ano ba ang nangyayari. So, after this, what will happen next? A copy of the notice as well as the interrogatories served shall be delivered to the deposition officer basis. Section 26, very clear. Ang copy daw ng notice together with the copies ng lahat ng interrogatories. Yung direct, yung cross, yung redirect, and recross if applicable together with the objections kung meron shall be delivered by the party taking the deposition to the officer designated in the notice. After ma-deliver, what will happen next? There will be now deposition taking. So, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na mas maganda kung napanood na ninyo yung past video about the process of deposition taking kasi mas maintindihan nyo yung buong picture. So, what is our basis? This is again your section 26. The deposition officer shall proceed promptly in the manner provided in section 17, 19, and 20. The deposition officer shall take the testimony of the witness in response to the interrogatories and, to, and the deposition officer also shall prepare, certify, file, or mail the deposition attaching thereto the copy of the notice as well as the interrogatories received by him or by her. Kaya, during sa deposition, ang gagawin lang ni deposition officer is babasahin lang lahat yung set of questions or yung series of questions. Kaya, yung objection mo, i-raise niya rin yan, pero he will not rule on that. He will just take note of the objections. So, this is the procedure if the mode of taking the deposition is through written interrogatories. But take note of the incidents. Ano ba itong mga incidents? You can file a motion under articles uh, under Section 16 rather of your Rule 23 that is a motion to enlarge or shorten the time stated in the notice, your Section 16 motion for the issuance of the protection order, or your Section 18 motion to terminate or limit the examination or a motion for the issuance of an order. Order as to what? Order that the, that, that the deposition shall not be taken before the designated deposition officer or an order that the deposition shall not be taken except upon oral examination. Where are you going to file this motion? Answer is... Very clear, according to Section 28, you need to file this motion in the court in which the action is pending. Kailan mo if a file itong mga motion? Very clear, again, si Section 28, after the service of the interrogatories 
and prior to the taking of the testimony of the deponent. Kaya, gagawin mo ito lahat prior to the deposition taking. And ano ang requirement again ng batas? You need to file a motion and your motion must state your reason. There must be a good cause shown. Take note only that itong section 15, section 16, and section 18 hindi all the time mag-a-apply. Applicable only if they are appropriate and just. So aside from these motions, what else can you do? What else can you file? You can ask the court for the issuance of a subpoena. So what can you recall about your subpoena? That is section 1 of your rule 21. It is a process directed to a person requiring him to attend and to testify. So let us just say that there is a case pending in the RTC of Quezon City and the case is declaration of nullity of marriage. Your ground is the solemnizing officer has no authority to solemnize that marriage. But the problem is the solemnizing officer is residing in Baguio City. And turn na ngayon ni solemnizing officer na mag-testify sa court. But ano ang sabi ni solemnizing officer? Petitioner, pat pasensya ka na. Hindi ako makakaluwas ng Maynila kasi natatakot ako sa COVID at saka ang daming protocols. So pasensya ka na, hindi na ako luluwas. So ano ang sabi mo ngayon, petitioner? Sir, sige na po. Ako na po ang bahala sa inyong transportation as well as your accommodation. Ako na ang magbabayad. Pumunta lang kayo dito. Ayaw pa rin ni solemnizing officer. So, what is your remedy? Can you go to the court and ask for the issuance of a subpoena? Let's see. Binalikan mo ngayon ulit si solemnizing officer. Kinausap mo. Ayaw talaga. So, tinakot mo na ngayon si solemnizing officer. Sir, pag hindi pa rin kayo luluwas dito sa Maynila, hihingi ako ng subpoena sa court. I will ask for the issuance of a subpoena at pag hindi nyo pa rin yan tinupad, baka pwede po kayong ma-aresto at ma-contempt. That is very clear according to Section 8 of your Rule 21, the court is allowed to issue a warrant of arrest or the court can hold that witness in contempt. But you read Section 10 of your Rule 21, ano ang sinasabi ng, rule, ng Section 10 of your Rule 21? Very clear. Hindi mo pwedeng ipaaresto si solemnizing officer or you cannot hold him in contempt because your solemnizing officer or your witness is residing more than 100 kilometers from his residence to the place where he or she is to testify by the ordinary course of travel. So since si solemnizing officer is from Baguio City, that is more than 100 kilometers from Quezon City. So in that case, what is your remedy? Your remedy is to take the deposition of this solemnizing officer. Ilalapit mo sa kanya, ikaw ngayon ang dadayo sa Baguio City. But what is the problem here? Sinabihan mo na si solemnizing officer, okay, just go to this place on this specific date and then we will take your deposition. At ano ang sabi ni solemnizing officer? Ayoko, ayoko pa rin lumabas ng aking bahay kasi natatakot ako sa COVID. So in that case, ano ang pwede mo nang gawin? Can you ask the court for the uh, can you go to the court and ask for the issuance of a subpoena? Answer is definitely yes. You can go to the court and ask for the issuance of a subpoena basis. Section 1 is very clear of your Rule 23. The attendance of witnesses may be compelled by the use of a subpoena. And if you are going to read your Section 1 of your Rule 21, take note, ang subpoena ay ini-issue hindi lamang para mag-attend ang tao ng hearing or ng trial ng action. Pwede rin i-issue ang subpoena para i-require ang tao to take his or her deposition. Question, who can issue your subpoena? Take note, Section 2 of your Rule 21, very clear that your subpoena 
can also be issued by the court of the place where the deposition is to be taken. Kaya kung yung deposition is gagawin sa Baguio City, then any of the courts in Baguio City can issue a subpoena. Ano lang ang kailangan mong gagawin? You read section 5 of your Rule 21. All you need to do is to show proof that you already serve a notice to take a deposition. Itong notice na pinag-uusapan natin, all you need to do is to uh, show this and then that is already a sufficient authorization for the issuance of the subpoena for the persons named in that notice by the court by the clerk of the court of the place in which the deposition is to be taken. So this is the procedure. Let's go now to scenarios. But balikan natin yung ating example. Our example is there is a case filed in Quezon City and the case is about declaration of nullity of marriage. The petitioner is the wife and the respondent is the husband, the ex-husband. And your witness is a uh, is the solemnizing officer but ayaw pumunta ng Maynila. Therefore, ano ang ginawa mo? Nagpa-depost ka kay solemnizing officer who is based in Baguio City. So, what you did now, petitioner, is you already served a notice that you are going to take the, the deposition of that solemnizing officer to your ex-husband or to the respondent. But what happened? Scenario number one, hindi ka nakapag-appear during the deposition. You failed to attend. You failed to attend a wife, petitioner, but your ex-husband or the lawyer of your ex-husband attended that deposition. So in that case, ano ang pwedeng mangyari? According to section 23, very clear that the court can order the party giving the notice to pay the other party the amount of the reasonable expenses incurred by him. So kung ang lawyer ng ex-husband is nakapag-appear, umakyat ng bagyo, then meron niyang mga cost aside from his appearance fee ang appearance fee for out of town may be 8,000 pesos yung kanya pang ginasto sa pagkain, sa gasolina sa hotel pwede kang pagbayarin ng court ano pa pwede ka rin pagbayarin ng court ng reasonable attorney's fees since this is a declaration of nullity of marriage and the ground is the Lack of authority of the solemnizing officer, ang pwedeng uh, singilin dito is maybe 150,000, that is reasonable attorney's fees. So, pwede ka rin pagbayari ng 150,000. Scenario number 2 can be found in section 24. What is scenario number 2? Ikaw, petitioner, ikaw, wife, nag-attend na sa deposition. Si ex-husband also or his lawyer attended also the deposition. But the problem is the deponent or the witness or si ating solemnizing officer hindi pumunta, hindi nag-attend. At nung tiningnan na ang record, nakita na ikaw, Petitioner, ikaw, wife, hindi ka pala nag-apply for the issuance of a subpoena. Therefore, hindi mo na compel si witness mag-attend. In that case, ano ang pwedeng mangyari? Parehas lang din. The court can also order the petitioner or the wife or the party giving the notice of taking a, of a deposition to pay the other party the amount of the expenses incurred by him, including reasonable attorney's fees. So again, for the last time, this is the procedure. If you are going to take your deposition upon written interrogatories, the last step is already the deposition taking. And sa deposition taking, what will happen? This one, your section 17, section 19, and section 20. Pag natapos na lahat ang mga tanungan portions, the uh, deposition officer shall securely seal the deposition in an envelope and then he will promptly file it with the court in which the action is pending. 
So what is the last stage? It can be found in your section 27 of your rule 23 when a deposition upon written interrogatories is filed already in the court in which the action is pending what will happen next the deposition officer shall promptly give notice to all of the parties and then if sino kahit sino man dito sa mga parties is gustong makakuha ng kopya ng deposition all he needs to do is to pay reasonable charges